What do electric motors, electric generators, and electrical transformers have in common? The answer is magnetism. That's right. Each of them interact with a magnetic field by using Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. While giving a physics lecture in 1820, a Danish scientist named Hans Christian Ørsted found that sending current through a wire caused a nearby compass needle to move by a small amount. He later observed that reversing the current also moved the compass needle, but in the opposite direction. Ørsted had found that electrical current in a wire could produce a magnetic field, and so the science of electromagnetism was born. In 1831, an English scientist named Michael Faraday published his observations based on work that had been previously done by Orsted. In his experiment, Faraday wrapped two coils of wire in the same direction on opposite sides of an iron ring. He found that passing an electric current across the wire produced a brief current in the second wire. He also discovered that by stopping the current in the first wire, he was able to produce a brief current in the second wire, but this time in the opposite direction. It was this discovery that would later become known as Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction. According to Faraday's law, a change in magnetic flux induces an electromotive force in a wire. If you were to draw a magnetic field using lines, you can think of magnetic flux as the number of lines going through an area. The more field lines go through a wire, the greater the magnetic flux. Electromotive force, which technically isn't a force, is the amount of energy required to move an amount of charge carried by electrons. Electromotive force, or EMF, is measured in volts, just like the electrical potential difference on a battery. Since EMF is produced whenever a magnetic field changes, EMF is also a measure of how much the magnetic flux changes for a certain amount of time. A greater change means more EMF, and no change means no EMF. This means that the same voltage that lets a battery move charges around in a wire is the same voltage that changing magnetic flux produces. And the source of the field doesn't matter. Whether it's a field from a permanent magnet, the field around a current carrying wire, or some other source of magnetic field that we've yet to discover, as long as we're able to change the magnetic flux, we're able to produce an electromotive force. Let's fill in the details of what happened during Faraday's experiment. When Faraday used a battery to send current through the first wire, the current induced a magnetic field around the coil and through the metal ring, just like Orsted had discovered earlier. This new magnetic field changed the amount of magnetic flux passing through the second coil of wire, which, in turn, induced an electromotive force. This EMF provided the energy needed to move the charges and allowed the electric current to flow. While Orsted's experiment showed that electric currents could produce magnetic fields, Faraday's experiment brought electromagnetism full circle by showing that a changing magnetic field could produce an electric current. So go ahead, take a look around. You'll soon notice that electromagnetics is all around you. Whether you're charging the battery on your phone, cooling yourself off with a fan, or stalling your hair with a blow dryer, be glad that you don't have to choose between electricity and magnetism. You can enjoy the sounds coming from your speakers knowing that Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction still works.